Hi everyone, my name is Paula Chatta. I'm an assistant principal here at Calgary Academy and uh, I've been here for almost 15 years and I'd like to take the opportunity to show you around our wonderful school. Calgary Academy has a almost 40 year history in multiple locations and we are a K-12 school and um, we don't normally use this process to show you around the building. We'd love to have you here in person. Obviously circumstances are changing things up for us a little bit but we'd like to do the best we can and show you around the school and talk about a few of our processes that we have in place here and um, show you what makes Calgary Academy an amazing place for our students to learn. Thank you. Come on, follow me. Um, welcome everyone. Um, You'll notice here, this is our tree of donors um, that we've had at Calgary Academy for many years. So many of our families who have been at Calgary Academy or have had family at Calgary Academy have donated to the school um, to help support our school. On this slide here, you'll notice our REACH philosophy. So REACH stands for respect, enthusiasm, altruism, commitment, and honesty. And all of our students very strongly believe in the REACH philosophy, which we celebrate weekly in classrooms and monthly as a whole school as well. You'll notice a few bumps and bruises um, throughout the hallways as we walk through um, to have you sh uh, to show you around um, as we are still getting ready for our school year that is starting in a few more days. So please excuse the disruptions. Um, we are busily working to get everything in place. Come on down and I'll show you one of our grade two, three classrooms that is just getting set up for the school year. As I said, our school uh, children are coming in next week. Come on in and this is grade two, three academy. classroom you will find um, we have a variety of different types of desks we have a variety of different types of chairs most are movable and quite flexible so that students can uh, arrange their desks in groups and cohorts and um, larger groups as well and even individually as needed for their learning typically we can move the desks around to um, uh, create separate math groups and language arts groups to uh, meet the students needs now, of course, the classroom isn't fully set up yet. However, we always have a schedule of the day as well. So as students arrive, they always have a schedule that indicates what we are working on. So whether it's language arts first thing in the morning and then recess and maybe a phys ed class and maybe lunch. So all the students come in and they know what to expect first thing in the morning for the day. As students come in, they all come in with an agenda and an assignment folder. Both things go home with them every evening as well. So when students come in, they are doing check-in for about 15 to 20 minutes in the morning, where they will take their agenda, where they have written their homework for the night, and bring it to the teacher, and individually have a check-in with every single um, uh, teacher. So they'll come in with an, an assignment folder as well, and it typically has either a piece of homework or a reminder, or something that they were working on the night before. Teachers check in students individually, while the remaining students are working independently on a variety of different activities at their level. That check-in check-in process happens in the morning and it happens at the end of the day as well to ensure that students have the belongings and supplies that they need before they leave the school day. It gives it an opportunity for teachers to chat with our students to ask them how was the bus ride, how was your play date last night, did you watch the hockey game. It gives them an opportunity to really connect with students one-to-one -one first thing in the morning to relieve any anxieties or uh, relieve any concerns that they might have so that they have a successful day uh, for the rest of the day. At the end of the day, the same process is followed uh, when their homework is written down and uh, student, uh, teachers ensure that each student is checked out and that they have all the things that they need for the evening. And we can talk about homework next. So we do believe that homework is important at Calgary Academy. Most of our students do need that extra support and practice throughout the day. So although they are working on their language arts or math concepts here in the school day, they do need another space and time to practice them, to review them, to solidify them. So we do ask that parents help and support their students in finding a quiet place at home, a homework place where they can independently complete their homework. When homework goes home, teachers ensure that the homework is something that the students can do independently. It is not supposed to be frustrating, it is not supposed to be extremely time consuming. Typically in elementary, from grades I would say grades kindergarten to grade three and four, you have maybe 15 to 25 minutes of homework. That's probably reading a book independently and then coming back the next school day and writing a little quiz on it. 
or maybe practicing some vocabulary cards or some computation skills. As the students get older in grade five and six, they might expect 25 to 35 minutes of homework, and of course in junior high, potentially 35 to 45 minutes as well, um, depending on their subject areas. And again, during a math class, a, student, a teacher will assess whether or not a student has understood the concept. After that, they can assign homework. Each student may have different types of homework and different amounts of homework, depending on how a student, um, their processing speed, um, how they have mastered the concept, whether or not they need more practice, and so on and so forth. If a teacher feels that the student is not ready to take that homework home and work on it independently, they will not assign it for homework. Homework that is not completed or cannot be completed for a variety of reasons can always come back to the school. A parent can jot a note to say the child was frustrated or didn't understand it. Not a problem and we will work with them in the morning during check-in to ensure that it is complete. All right, what else can I show you around the classroom? Every classroom has an elementary and iPad part. So I'll see if they are ready to go. You'll notice there aren't any in here yet, but they will be coming very soon. So every student's name is labeled on the iPad part. All iPads are charged at the end of every day. They all come with a keyboard as well. And now the technology is not to drive the learning, but is to enhance the, enhance the education. So for instance, in math class, if they've worked on um, create a place value and they're using a number chart, you can also use a number line on an iPad instead of using um, handheld manipulatives if it makes it easier. So again, the iPad is there and the technology is there to enhance learning, but not to drive it. You'll notice every classroom has a smart panel. It is a great learning opportunity again for students to be able to even come up to the panel to help, te help the teacher while they're working through their uh, work and multiple students can come up at once. But again, another form of visual learning as well for our students who need the extra strategies while they are learning. Auditory as well. So our iPads, an example, a quick example would be something like this. Of course, they would have cases. This is the teacher example here, but they would all have cases and iPad about this size that comes with a keyboard as well. Um, another um, topic I wanted to talk about was reporting. So we do use PowerSchool as a school. Um, however, with the elementary schools, uh, grades K to six, we use PowerSchool to store marks and so on, but it is not live for parents just because of the, um, the level of information that needs to go home in terms of anecdotal information as opposed to the percentages and marks. However, communication is, um, very important for at Calgary Academy so that we have open communication with our parents. Very early in September, we like to sit down with parents and work on IPP goals. Those individual program plans are created using the student's previous history, using the previous IPPs and the psychoeducational assessment to drive what those um, learning goals will be in consultation with parents. You'll expect that meeting before the end of September. Post that, we have four terms. So we have, um, this year we'll do virtual meetings, but in the past we have meetings in November, February, April, and of course uh, the last term would be at the end of June. So we have four quarters where we like to speak to parents um, each and every time, and it's always a conversation about how we can better support the needs of the students and um, ensure that we are working as a team uh, to help your child. As we walk from the classrooms, we often um, take the opportunity to take our students to the learning commons as well, but you'll notice as we go, our younger students do use open cubbies and these help support their um, organizational skills by hanging their backpacks and jackets and lunches and belongings all in there. So heading down to the learning commons, again, this is another space where many of our students come down individually or as a classroom to come and learn. So in this space here, you'll notice, of course, we do have plenty of books. We do have an accelerated reading program where our students independently choose a uh, book at the level that they are best reading at and uh, read it independently at home for homework or during silent reading time in the classroom and write a quiz on it uh, at school as well. So they earn points and uh, feel quite successful in terms of how many numbers of words that they've actually read. This space is also used um, for robotics as well, and lots of the STEM and STEAM learning. You'll notice many boxes like this. Uh, this happens to be an EV3 Mindstorm, and many of our grades uh, four, five, and six students use those. We also have a number of VEX robotics up at the top. Uh, so many of our classes do come in here with our uh, designated teachers to do some hands-on learning and tying the curriculum 
with the uh, robotics and um, the math and the spatial reasoning and so on and so forth. So again, another space, another opportunity for students to engage in learning in another space and another capacity. We're just heading down to another classroom. One of the questions that we often receive here at Calgary Academy is what is the difference between our academy and collegiate program? So we saw a classroom already that was an academy classroom. I'd like to introduce you to and show you what a typical collegiate classroom would look like. Now in a collegiate classroom, you'll notice things are quite similar in the sense we've got our same color coding desks, we've got our chairs that are movable, um, and of course the arrangement is different in every classroom. But you will notice that isn't just one teacher desk and that's because we have one teacher for a maximum of 16 students in our collegiate classrooms in elementary. We always have in both academy and collegiate classrooms a best work board. So it could be also called a student showcase or a best work board where students put up their work that they feel most proud of. Daily they can put up work that's handed back to them, clip it on and towards the end of the week we like to file it all away, start up fresh and every Monday they start up again. We typically have our birthdays displayed as well. And again, you'll notice a similar smart panel as you did in the other classroom as well. We have our reach posters and expectations in every classroom. The reach poster just highlights all of the different areas where we excel with our students and um, invite them to remind them to um, follow the expectations in classrooms, hallways, lunchrooms, the bus, um, school functions, and of course other spaces in the school as well. You'll notice the homework board is typically put up as well so students can visually see what their homework looks like for the evening or for the afternoon. And again, the iPad cart and the shelving is very similar as previous classrooms. You'll see a lot of consistency between the classrooms. So each student will have a space, have a shelf designated to them where their supplies are. Most teachers try and color code so that math might be red binder, Social studies might be a block binder, so when it is time for math, everybody knows what color. They can look around and see what's, what everybody else is bringing up and um, taking out. So just the organization helps them, helps support those executive functioning skills as well. So they know what to do, when to do it, and they know what the expectations are. Now that you've seen in a collegiate classroom, um, I want to talk a little bit more in depth about the academy classrooms. Of course, our academy students need support sometimes in one or more than one area. That could be in language arts, it could be in math, or it could be in writing. For that purpose, we have a built-in block called remediation, and it's building foundational literacies in either or and or more than one of those areas. So that is the main difference between the academy and the collegiate classrooms. Typically during the day, the academy and collegiate classrooms go out for recess together, they have phys ed together, they go to their integrated studies classes together. However, their main academics are held in separate classrooms, sometimes right across the hall from one another. During that remediation class, students are broken down into smaller groups, sometimes one to five, sometimes one on one, depending on the need. We have a math center that supports our students with math support, and that could look like um, working with students with math manipulatives, it could be more problem solving skills, and it could also be using ST Math, which is a spatial temporal math program, to build those foundational skills in math as well. We have a writing center here that supports a variety of our learners across the school in terms of the foundational writing skills as well, from sentence structure to paragraph writing to essay writing. We also have a reading center that also supports our students. And in this center, sometimes we have students coming in one to one, one to two, depending on the need and depending on what level they are at. Of course, our classroom teachers are also teaching remediation skills at the same time. We look at what the needs are of our students and then of course um, provide them with support as, as needed. All right, well with all that remediation and all the academics that we do focus on, of course students, students need a break during the day. So we typically have a recess break in the morning with snacks and of course we also have a lunch break in the afternoon. For lunch, students have the option of bringing their own lunch. They can warm it up here at the school. They can also pre-order their lunches for up to a month in advance from the Castle Cafe. The Castle Cafe, as you can see here, supports students with a variety of healthy options for lunches. They have the option of buying a breakfast in the morning. They can come in to grab a recess snack as well. And typically during lunchtime, we will pull down all our tables and our divisions will come in at three different times. We have an elementary lunch period, a, a junior high lunch period, and a high school lunch period. It is supervised by the teachers 
mostly classroom teachers or other individuals here in the building. For the most part, with all of that supervision, we are very careful about how much our students are eating, making sure they are eating, making sure they all have lunches, and making sure that they are um, sitting socially, comfortably with their peers and friends as well. Now, of course, this year looks a little bit different and we'll, we will be having class um, lunches, so lunch will be in the classroom and we won't be coming to the cafeteria. However, they can still pre-order their lunches from the cafeteria online and uh, have their lunches ready to go during lunchtime. Uh, most lunches are very healthy. They are made here, right in the Castle Cafe, and from salads to sandwiches to hot special lunches to pizza day. And um, our, the ladies at the servery are fantastic in getting to know your students and knowing whether or not they want mayonnaise or mustard or lettuce or no lettuce on their sandwiches as well. So they do a fantastic job of taking care of our children here. The multi-purpose room is also, as you notice, it is quite large. It is also used as a phys ed space, an additional phys ed space. So during the um, breaks or between lunches, everything is put away and the room is cleared out. As you notice, this is still post-summer cleaning right now, but um, everything is taken out and it can be used as an additional phys ed space as well. In addition to this space, of course, we do have two gymnasiums. We have a weight room, and of course, we also have our wonderful outdoor space as well, which we hope to use quite a bit this year. We have a small auxiliary gym, which typically houses one class at a time. And we also have a large main gym, which we can put a divider down the middle and have two classes running at the same time. The large gym is also used um, at school assemblies where we can have all our students come in together and um, celebrate reach celebrations and other um, events as well. For example, sporting events or um, volleyball tournaments and even basketball tournaments. As you notice, it is housed with our supplies right now as we are getting things organized for our students. But again, another fantastic space for our students to enjoy phys ed. The phys ed program focuses on a variety of different skills from coordination skills to leadership skills to sportsmanship skills. And of course, as students come into phys ed, they are grade grouped with, their, um, with students in the same grade and brought into the phys ed space so that they have, again, another space to socialize with another group of students and of course, learn from our um, specifically trained phys ed teachers as well that plan out a scope and sequence of the year for our students following our programs of study. So phys ed is a space and a time of the day where students can collaborate with their peers and maybe see some of the peers that they don't have in their regular homerooms as well as they combine together and of course branch off into separate classes in their grade groupings. In addition to phys ed, another time of the day that students are brought together and their homerooms are mixed together in grade groupings and of course into smaller classes is when they choose their integrated studies. Integrated studies are classes like art, music, multimedia, drama, and a variety of others. As students get older, they have more options to choose from. Our younger students from kindergarten to grade four do four, so art, multimedia, drama, and music. And then of course, as they get into grade five and six and older into junior high years, they can choose CA Cycle, Construction Lab, Spanish, Band, and several other options. I'll take you first into this classroom here. This is our multimedia space that is under construction, but of course um, a newly remodeled space for our students. Students in here use a variety of programs online to enhance their visual arts skills, multimedia skills, communication skills, and so on and so forth. Our terms go from about 10 weeks, so each student will do four different integrated studies options throughout the year. Integrated studies is another opportunity for students to show their confidence, show their skills in another environment. Typically in the classroom, if a student has challenges with learning um, literacy or math, they might become frustrated or even feel um, a little less confident. However, when they come into their integrated studies classes, this is another space for them to shine and show their skills. This is our art room here. In the art lab, or in the art studio, I should say, um, our students use a variety of different skills from paper and pencil to pastels to watercolors to clay to um, personalized portfolios by the time they get into their high school years. Our art is taught by a specialized art teacher and our students again have a variety of different spaces in the building here to come in into this classroom and show off their skills. In addition to our multimedia and art spaces, I'll show you one more. We have a drama theater as well 
uh, we call it our black box. And um, our students in this class here, of course, our drama classes go all the way from kindergarten to grade 12. The black box is an amazing opportunity for students to express movement, creativity, and a variety of different skills that they may not have uh, or may not have the ability to show in the classroom. So the black box here has, of course, a set of bleachers that comes down and oftentimes has an audience. And that audience can be a group of teachers. It could also be administrators and it could be 70 parents that are coming in to see the performance that has been put on. In the past, we've always done a senior high production that typically spans from about September to January. And then we do a junior high production that spans from about February to May. These productions um, typically go for a week long and showcases during the daytime matinees for their fellow students and peers. And of course, evening performances for parents, which are typically sold out. Um, but again, another opportunity for students to shine be at the front of the stage, singing their hearts out where they might not have otherwise had the opportunity. And every student who wants to be part of the drama productions is part of those productions in any way that they choose to. So whether or not you're confident to be at the front and um, audition for a lead role, or maybe you'd like to work in the technical, back, technical side of things and work on the lighting and the sound and all of the components that actually make fantastic shows come to life. Hello everyone. So that wraps up our tour of inside the building and of course we tried to go through all the spaces that we typically would on a tour if you were with us and present at Calgary Academy. Um, the hallways are typically bustling with students, there is chatter in the hallways as they're heading down for lunch or coming in from recess. Um, so it is a bit of a different feel of course when the building is full and uh, full of life and excitement. Uh, we certainly hope um, that you're able to get an idea of what our school is like and some of the spaces that we teach in and um, where your students uh, spend their day. Thank you very much for your time. We certainly appreciate you joining us. And if you have further questions, please email us at admissions at calgaryacademy.com. Thank you so much.